great weekend of holiday racing in the books all across the country, especially right here at Belmont Park where we have the Stars and Stripes Racing Festival on Saturday. Welcome to the National Racing Report, everyone. Eric Donovan here with Maggie Wolfendale, Jason Blewett's off, and Andy Serling and Richard Migliori down at Monmouth Park for the United Nations. Yeah, what a fun day in the United Nations. Um, as always at Monmouth Park, a little jealous of, of Andy yeah. and the MIG. And too, I'm jealous of Jason. He's down in Florida. He's down in Florida. It's Florida. warm there, too, but he's, he's on vacation. On he's not working. No, exactly. <laughs> uh, but Monmouth Park is going to host the Haskell, and they're also going to host American Pharaoh in a couple weeks, too, which is really exciting. Yeah, it's going to be a huge day for them uh, down on the Jersey Shore coming up uh, the first weekend in uh, August down there for the Haskell. But uh, we had a great weekend of racing here at uh, Belmont Park, and the uh, highlight was, uh, of course, Saturday, Stars and Stripes Racing Festival. The big race was the Belmont Oaks Invitational. Key horse, Lady Eli, she showed up, and she did not disappoint. No, she didn't. She's facing 13 other rivals in here, Eric, and everybody thinking that, well, she's going to, you know, face the toughest field of her life. It's going to be a little bit of a tall task for her, and she said, I don't think so. Um, she got a great ride uh, by Ira Ortiz, saved ground where she could, and then just tipped her out when he needed to, and we'll watch her motor home from here. And she's probably about uh, ninth or tenth here now, uh, number two, about uh, third from last on the screen there on the outside, just starting to uh, motor up beneath Ira Ortiz, and you know what, Maggie, I think he fits this filly so well, because he's just so patient, so calm on her, just makes a little bit of a move, she gets that uh, flow toward the outside there, and then when he asks, she just takes off and had plenty in the stretch here. You're right, I mean, they're both kind of made for each other, and she, he's so confident on her, which I think really helps, and, uh, you know, she's just one of the best horses in the country right now, and as Chad Brown has said, probably the best horse that he's trained so far six for six in her career and obviously big things to come for her um, looking forward to either the beverly d or the lake uh, placid up at saratoga hopefully get her for saratoga but obviously the queen elizabeth and the breeders cup philly and their turf the ultimate goals well you know she'll be at saratoga training whether yeah. or not she runs there we it. hope she does uh but uh, i'm sure she'll get a lot of attention in the mornings when she goes out to train but uh, perhaps older fillies in the beverly d is what could lie next but you get the feeling watching this you know whatever challenge she's presented i thought you know going a mile and a quarter against a, a tougher field this time out would be a tougher challenge for her and you know what just like nothing else mattered she's the best horse in the race and she ran a race yeah, she's the best horse in this division uh, turf by order. far. It's her order. You're completely right. She earned a 98 um, by her speed figure. And as I said, she ran two seconds faster than the boys did in the Belmont Derby. Yeah, that's the, the key stat. Speed figures don't really tell the, the whole story no. in turf races. Agreed. But when you run two seconds faster than the boys, uh, that, that that goes to say a lot Like right there. And uh, Lady Eli is certainly one of, the, uh, uh, one of the more popular horses in the game right now. We hope she stays, uh, stays in the, with her winning ways. I, I really do, too. Uh, and just when you always have an undefeated horse like her, you know, the energy just builds up around her. And it's it, it attracts people to the sport, I think, and, and the people who follow the sport no matter what, because we always like to see um, champions like this. We sure do. And uh, the uh, Belmont uh, Derby, the uh, male counterpart to the Belmont Oaks, was run uh, a couple races earlier on the Saturday car. There wasn't a standout in this race, certainly no Lady Eli types, but he did have, you know, a good field. Horses from uh, all over the world. He had a, a French and Vader and uh, an Irish invader as well and we'll pick out the action up here on the uh, backstretch Maggie and uh, you know it seemed to me that uh, the two horse Bolo you know kind of had everything his own way he didn't run his race here something happened Rafael Bayerano said that you know he, he thought that he didn't feel that well they took him back to the barn everything turned out okay but the horses on the inside here run real well we're talking about the five horse to pass the winner the four uh, Candalo comes up the inside to be second and even the six closing bell it was the longest shot in the race you know almost uh, gets it gets in the number as well so kind of an insidey flow I thought to this race yeah which you can't really say that about the the track about the course itself it's just how it worked out here and I thought it really had he ride by Joel Rosario seizing that spot along the rail and and forcing force the pass through there and he he motored home. I mean, he was impressive in the latter stages of this race where he, he ran quickly um, to the wire, 22 and change. Uh, so I think he's a horse that has now burst onto the scene and put himself at the forefront of this division. I remember going back to uh, the J uh, James W. Murphy stakes at Pimlico and really being enamored with this horse and what I saw from him physically. And he ran a good race that day, but I was actually a little surprised that he didn't get the job done. But 
boy. He burst on the scene in that Penn Mile, and it turns out, actually, the longer he goes, the better he seems to be. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, you, you take a look at his record, and you, you saw him going those mile races, the Penn Mile, the Murphy. Before that, he's a, a son of Spice Down. You're thinking, oh, the mile and a quarter, right. this is probably pressing a little bit for him. But no, like you said, I mean, he was at his best uh, in this race going the uh, mile and a quarter distance here. Uh, owner Rick Santulli and uh, Alan Goldberg trying to decide where they were going to run the horse next. Goldberg saying that originally they might, you know, sit on him and wait for the fall. And, you know, I think Santulli kind of said, hey, you know what? He's good right now. Let's try to, you know, get another race I know, uh, soon. I, and, I had uh, read that from yeah, Goldberg. I so. said, why, why are we giving him the summer off? I mean, yeah, I think he's thinking Breeders' Cup and wants to right. get him there with the least um, resistance so possible. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we do get to see him. And then there's plenty of races for him to, to run in in Saratoga. So bring force to pass up there, Mr. Goldberg. <laughs> we hope to see him up there as well. And uh, some other big stars on the uh, card as well on uh, Stars and Stripes. Last year's uh, Belmont Stakes winner, Tonalist, was the uh, one to beat a heavy favorite in the Suburban. And kind of an oddly run race. A very quick opening uh, fraction, opening quarter and half mile here. And the, they start the mile and a quarter. And we'll pick it up just past the uh, three-quarter pole there uh, toward the back of the pack. Tonalist in the Black Silks. He's moving alongside the eventual winner, FNX, here, which I think is interesting because Johnny Velasquez took a lot of heat here for this ride on, on Tonalist. And yeah, perhaps he likes to sit back and make one big run. But he's moving with the eventual winner here. Just as luck would have it, FNX runs into traffic, and I think that is what made him win the race, because if he's moving with Tonalist, I'm wondering how the, the finish plays out here. Yeah, I know. I don't know, understand why they were moving, both of them. You know, thinking back on it, you're right. Um, Junior Alvarado and FNX got really fortunate they ran into the back of Coach Inge and, and Street Babe here. Uh, and give credit where credit's due. Uh, Coach Inge ran a remarkable race uh, coming in off of that Brooklyn win, going a mile and a half. He obviously did got to set the fractions he wanted that day. Not so yesterday. He, you know, forced the issue, ran fast, and ran hard all the way to the line, only beaten a length and a half uh, by the eventual first and second place finishers. And really, you'd look at this and you think Tonalist isn't going to get any part of the exacta. Oh, at the top of the stretch, I'm thinking he's, you know, probably last or fifth or something like that. But this is just a testament to how good a horse he is, how much class he has. And he just keeps digging in here. And I, I thought he was going to pull it out. Out, uh, inside the 16th ball, but FNX, another great story to the race, because this is a horse that ran on Belmont Day that didn't finish. He comes back in the Suburban and wins. Yeah, a change of equipment, a Houghton bit um, added to the bridle of FNX. It, it does give you a lot of control. I've ridden in it before. Horses who want to lean in or out, uh, it helps a lot. They don't even think about doing so um, after you put that on. But Jimmy Jerkin saying he was just a different horse that, that yesterday. In that Belmont Day, the crowd and all the excitement kind of got to him, and he seemed to kind of run his race and be a bit frazzled before he even went in the gate. So he was just a happier horse yesterday, and it paid off. And two, I think the trips tell the story, too. Yeah, they do. And uh, just to kind of weird how the races work out that way sometimes but certainly the top three finishes all uh, very strong efforts there and very much looking forward to seeing what they do next FNX and Tonalist could rematch in the Whitney and I wonder what's on tap for a coach Inge a horse who uh, you know can go a mile and a half and you know obviously good at a mile and a quarter as well and you know mile and eighth probably suits him just fine too so we'll see what happens and he's a really interesting horse I mean I think about him going back to uh, Saratoga last year and he was he did not have his mind on running he was in a turf race then mm -hmm. and finally over the winter at Aqueduct he really put it all together for Todd Pletcher. Todd's done an outstanding job. His crew really getting this horse to develop into a you know a graded stakes uh, caliber horse, and then we'll see if he can uh, win a grade one at some point in his career. One more race to look at from uh, the Saturday card at Belmont. And this is the Dwyer for the three-year-olds and uh, Texas Red coming back. First time since uh, the San Vicente. He's been uh, sidetracked by a couple of issues, uh, but uh, the uh, he was a narrow favorite here, and the other horse to beat uh, is the uh, six horse in here, Spitzer for trainer Bill Mott. Came into this race undefeated two for two, and uh, he goes uh, through this race three for three now. And back to back uh, wins on the card, stakes wins for it. The Sire Spites Town. And, you know, people kind of questioning. I first lead the class of Spites uh, in here, and two, how far he wanted to go. I mean, I do think a mile is probably his limit. But he was impressive here, Eric. Just stepping off, the, stepping up the way he did, running a fast time. Uh, he earned what a one oh. Uh, four speed figure um, for this performance here and just fended off every challenge that uh, was brought his way. Yeah, I mean, I really like the way he dug in here inside the eighth ball. I mean, it looks like some of the other horses are going to get a little bit closer. It looks like Texas Red, you know, is going to, you know, make it a little bit closer than he does. And then Spicer gives you this little bit extra here. And uh, it seems like everyone says, you know, he's going back to seven furlongs for the King's Bishop. And, you know, I guess that's the right move right after the race. I was thinking, well, you know what? I mean, outside of American Pharaoh, you know, what is the three-year-old division right now anyway? This is a good horse. And, 
you know, perhaps he can stretch out to the Jim Dandy and see where they go now. But Bill Mott, you can't question him. Nope. He knows his horses. <laughs> he says his horse is going King's Bishop. So uh, anything long, uh, I guess, is out of the question. But uh, a nice, a very nice prospect. Very exciting uh, horse uh, for the Windstar Farm trainer, Bill Mott and uh, Jose Liscano. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, you look at his pedigree, kind of look at him physically. And, and, and to, I like a 7 eighths to a mile um, for this horse. But he's exciting because he's just kind of bursting onto the scene where all the three-year-old actions kind of already taken place. And, and now he is kind of interesting to see where he's going to fit um, throughout the latter half of that season. Two other stakes horses on the card. We should mention Irish Jasper winning uh, the uh, victory ride. She'll be pointed to the test. Uh, yeah, very nice job by uh, Derek Ryan and also a private zone. What can you say about him? I mean, the, the so field cool. came up a little bit light with scratches, but uh, he just goes out there every time and runs his race. He does, and he's so game. He didn't have to be yesterday. He just kind of had a walk in the park as far as he was concerned. I mean, obviously, most horses can't go 22 and 44 um, and just draw off in hand, but he did, and it's it's fun to have him racing here. I like I like the fact that we get to see Private Zone quite he, often. He's a cool horse. They're saying that uh, they might wait for the forego later on in the meet at Saratoga to run him next or even the Vosburgh. So they're looking to keep him fresh for the Breeders' Cup. And we're going to freshen up right now. We're going to take a quick time out. We'll head out of town for our next segment down to the Jersey Shore. We'll check in on the U.N. and the Salvatore Mile. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National Racing Report. A look at the uh, paddock here at beautiful Belmont Park. Just a couple more weeks of racing here at Belmont before we head up to Saratoga. And, of course, in action all summer, Monmouth Park. They're uh, down there on the Jersey Shore enjoying uh, the nice weather and uh, some good racing as well. And they had a great card on uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, they did. Obviously highlighted by the United Nations. We saw our Breeders' Cup turf winner and, uh, you know, champion turf horse main sequence back in action Big question coming off of that Dubai layoff. Always Horses, a question. Uh, never seem to bounce back quite as good as you would think. It takes them a little bit of time and racing to, to get back to the where they were, and sometimes they don't. But it was interesting. We had two horses on that card in two different races. Obviously, Salvatore Mile, which we'll check out, were coming off of Dubai efforts. Now, right, well, let's head down to Frank Miramati. He's got the call of the United Nations from start to finish. straight to the front and shining copper the big long shots a bit quicker and now takes the lead sycamore lane third and divine oath comes away in fourth then it's big blue kitten fifth through the opening furlong about seven or eight lengths off his fellow color bearer outside of him comes imagining twilight eclipse is on the rail with nine lengths to make up then it's main sequence and slumbers at the back shining copper ensures an honest pace as he opens up four lengths into the stretch for the first time Gary Stevens and Ashley Love Sugar just galloping along by himself in second. Then comes Divine Oath in third at the rails, Sycamore Lane fourth. Twilight Eclipse is a joint fifth, and now Imagining moves up outside of him. They are followed by Big Blue Kitten, Main Sequence, and Slumber is about 18 lengths off front-running Shining Copper, who has opened it up now to lead by eight lengths. Ashley Love Sugar is in second. Sycamore Lane third. He's just in front of Divine Oath, racing in between horses, imagining three wide, a dozen lengths off this long shot leader. Big Blue Kitten is side by side with Twilight Eclipse, then Slumber and Main Sequence. Shining Copper continuing this ambitious run with a double digit lead. Ashley Loves Sugar, Sycamore Lane, and Imagining are second, third, and fourth. Divine Oath is just behind them. Twilight Eclipse is asked to get closer, responding just a bit. Big Blue Kitten has the red cap as they're swarming in on Shining Copper into the far turn. Main Sequence and Slumber have been at the back throughout. Shining Copper's lead diminishing. It's down to two lengths. Ashley loves Sugar imagining Big Blue Kitten ranging into contention. He's only four lengths off the leader, swinging to the outside as Twilight Eclipse saves every bit of ground, trying to get through the narrowest of openings from the back of the pack. Main Sequence still has eight to make up. They're a furlong from the finish, and Big Blue Kitten lets out an electrifying rally to take command. Shining Copper running a valiant race in second. Twilight Eclipse and then Slumber. Big Blue Kitten wins the United Nations for the second time in three years. Slumber rallied strongly for second. 
It was a photo for third. I guess a few storylines at play here, Maggie. First of all, a big blue kitten uh, gets back to the uh, winner's circle here, uh, as you heard uh, Frank Miramati say, in the United Nations. Chad Brown running 1-2 in another uh, grade one turf race. Reverse of the uh, Belmont uh, Day uh, yeah. Manhattan finish. Yeah, exactly. I love Slumber that day. I was really pleased to see him finally put it all together. But... You know, sometimes having a rabbit works out, and it works out in your favor, as Ken Ramsey did. He sent out Shining Copper, who ran valiantly on the front end to finish fourth uh, here in the United Nations. But Big Blue Kitten, take nothing away from him, Eric. He's, what, now 13 for 27 lifetime. That's nearly half of your career starts, and he shows up every single time. A really cool horse. I mean, a seven-year-old uh, Ridgling who, uh, yeah, like you said, shows up every time and just year after year comes mm -hmm. back in that same form. Doesn't seem yeah. like he loses a step. Sometimes there's horses that run better than him and beat him. Sometimes they don't, like today, and he wins the race. Um, the other storyline in the race, obviously, the uh, returning uh, effort here from Main Sequence, who I believe was seventh uh, in this race maybe. Just a no factor here. No factor at all. I mean, you kind of felt that way going around the turn. He was a bit too far back for him uh and as they swung for home he did not pick up his feet he did not kick in no turn of foot as he typically has but as i was alluding to it's tough to get over those dubai that dubai layoff that dubai trip so maybe he'll get this one under his belt barring that he comes out of this race in, in tip-top shape and we'll see a better and more true main sequence next time out i think you're probably right about that one more race to bring you from a uh, mammoth park the uh, salvatore mile attracted a good field in here including a race day who really came to hand for trainer todd pletcher uh, over the winter uh, won the oakland handicap in his last start he went off a heavy favorite in the salvatore let's head back down to mammoth to take a look at this run and they're off in the salvatore mile braidster came out running as did valid and fabulous kids sprints through on the inside to battle for the lead race day came away in good order fourth and red vine is just inside of him coup de gras don dolce at the back fabulous kid leads by a length and a half around the first turn tracked by Braidster second and valid has settled into a good spot third the same true for red vine along the inside fourth and five lengths off the lead then comes coup de gras on the outside of race day those two moving in tandem right after the leaders as they try to slow the tempo down and don dolce trails with five furlongs to run Braidster is the new leader. Fabulous Kid is keeping pace with him just ahead back second. Then comes Coup de Gras claiming third. Valid is fourth, just a length and a half off the lead. Red Vine follows him with race day, four and a half lengths off the pace, and he is six lengths clear of Don Dolce. Into the far turn they go. Braidster opens up a length on Fabulous Kid, Coup de Gras. Valid being worked upon in between horses to be a joint second. Race Day still has five to make up. He's just outside of Red Vine in the red cap, who's now threading his way through traffic. And Don Dolce, Race Day has a lot of work to do with a quarter of a mile to go. Braidster is the leader. Valid coming after him from second. Red Vine three behind third. Race Day well beaten. There's an eighth of a mile to go. And Braidster has his mind on business. Red Vine becomes the only threat on the outside of Valid. But it's Braidster clear by three with a 16th to go. A good-looking performance from Braidster. Dominant in the Salvatore Mile. Red Vine was second. Third went to Valid. Fourth between Don Dolce and Fabulous Kid. Well, Maggie, I guess the connections of uh, Main Sequence are hoping that he can do what Braidster <laughs> did in his second start back because uh, Braidster ran in the uh, Godolphin Mile, was 13th there, came back without much of a layoff, actually, ran uh, on uh, Derby Weekend and uh, finished third in the allowance race, but uh, refreshes again, steps up into the Salvatore Mile, takes him all the way on the front end. Yeah, a race that he was second in last year, got away with slightly softer fractions, but... I mean, he drew away from this field like he was 10 lengths better than these, really. Uh, and an interesting angle that you always like is the blinkers off angle here today um, with Braidster. It's kind of, you know, you don't usually see that with the horse as established as he is, as old as he is, a five-year-old. And they decided to take him off him today, and it paid off. It does pay off sometimes. You never know. And uh, just uh, a good effort here from Braidster. Eddie Keneally, Corey Lannery shipping in for the uh, winning ride uh, of the uh, Salvatore Mile. One more time out here on National Racing Report. We're going to head down to Gulfstream Park. They revived the Summit of Speed. We'll take a look at a few races down there, including a couple two-year-old races. So stay tuned.
take a, a flight down from a Monmouth Park to a Gulfstream Park and check out the Summit of Speed. A few highlights from that uh, card there. The main race, the uh, Smile Sprint, a grade two. And a uh, nice uh, field assembled for this one. Work all week. The Breeders' Cup Sprint winner looking to make amends off uh, his second place finish in the Aristides. We'll head down to Peter Aiello. He's got the call of the Smile Sprint. They're off in the grade two Smile Sprint. From the outside, Sing Another Song gets the first call. Here's Wildcat Red and Favorite Tail keyed up from the inside. Favorite Tail puts ahead in front. Wildcat Red will accompany him early in second. And Florent Giroux and the Breeders' Cup winner work all week. Away third and in the clear. Sing Another Song won the start, but he's back fourth. Three lengths better than Alsvid, who's two in front of Falling Sky. Then it's Grand Shores, followed by Letical, and City of Weston is last of all as they speed into the far turn. On top, Favorite Tail and Edgar Zayas through the opening quarter in 21-4. and four. Wildcat Red stays with him second, work all week, perched off the speed third, and he gets a bit closer now at the 5 sixteenths. Two lengths more to the inside, Sing Another Song, followed by Alsvid and Grand Shores, then Falling Sky, and they run to the top of the stretch. There's a quarter of a mile left to go in the smile sprint and favorite tail cuts the corner and opens a length and a half lead work all week trying to get after him second wildcat red between horses third alsvid now fourth and grand shores coming up the inside there's an eighth of a mile to go and favorite tail is finding more on the top it's favorite tail who sparkles in the smile runs away and wins it by three and a half work all week second wildcat red third then grand shores alsvid city of weston letical falling sky and we saw a favorite tail here in the true north on uh, Belmont uh, Stakes Day, uh, or Belmont Stakes Week, rather, and uh, set the pace there, but faded to fifth. Doesn't fade today. Eric, I thought I was looking at a different horse that day for the True North. He really developed into a good-looking individual, and it does... I think helped to have speed going the six, especially at Gulfstream Park. But he was good today, and he's a, he's a neat kind of overachieving type. Mm -hmm. uh, work all week. A decent effort for second. Doesn't seem like he's back to the form that uh, saw him win the Breeders' Cup last year. No. Uh, you know, the Breeders' Cup sprint always kind of, it seems to be horses that, either burst onto the scene or don't usually win. It's always a, a weird race to me that it either sets up for something coming from the clouds or it's just one on the front end. So we'll see what he has in store um, and if he'll head back to the Breeders' Cup. A couple two-year-old races on the car down at Gulfstream Park. We'll take a look at the boys now in the Bird on the Wire Stakes. Good group uh, assembled for both of them. The, the uh, main interest is uh, of the two-year-olds is in the next race. We'll take a look at the Cassidy, but uh, we'll take a look at the boys here in the Bird on the Wire. Summit of Speed is underway, racing in the bird on the wire stakes. From the outside, it's Silent Prayer who wins the break over Stablemate Fellowship, who comes away in second. Aventus is now third. Golden Ray from the outside, Union Val between them. Francesco Blue is second last, and the early trailer is Zukov. Speeding away, the Philly Silent Prayer passes the half-mile pole on a three-length lead. Fellowship is second, Union Val is third. Golden Ray is racing in fourth, about four lengths from it. Then Francesco Blue and Aventus, and Zukov is the trailer. Five sixteenths to go. Jacks are better. One two. Silent Prayer leads Fellowship by a length and a half. Francesco Blue and Prada move up on the inside of a Union Val and two lengths better than Golden Ray, then Aventus, and on the outside Zukov. They run past the quarter mile pole. They won a 22 and two opening quarter, and Silent Prayer continues to lead it. Fellowship set down for the drive by Jesus Rios comes to call on the outside. Back third is Francesco Blue, then Union Val, and they're inside the final furlong. Up for the lead, Fellowship. Francesco Blue begins to motor now. Second back third is Silent Prayer. Fellowship is digging in, but Francesco Blue is surging on the outside. Here's Francesco Blue and Edgar Prado to win the bird on the wire by three parts of a leg. Fellowship second, Silent Prayer third, Union Val fourth and 105 and two. Francesco blew up in the uh, final strides to win this one for our buddy Edgar Prado. Yeah, I thought it was a great ride by Edgar here. Safe ground, tipped out. Had to get into him a little bit, but once he got that rhythm going down the middle of the stretch there, he he won very nicely, I thought. Um, Francesco Blue here for Larry Pilati. Um, and as you said, Edgar Prado, a son of Lourdes de San Amo, and it broke his maiden on the turf down there at Gulfstream, but he's proved to be versatile. Yeah, didn't run too well in the dirt in his first start and uh, stepped forward with that win on the turf second time out. So uh, obviously can handle the dirt, just uh, wasn't ready to go first time out. We'll take a look at a horse now that was ready to go first time out and was ready to go again once today. Ballet Diva, a heavy favorite here in the Cassidy for the two-year-old Phillies going five and a half furlongs. And they're off in the Cassidy stakes. Toward the rail, Ballet Diva like a rocket right to the front and a length and a half clear. 
Rosebud's Tiger comes away racing second with its high time now third. From the outside above fashion is fourth. Wish I had a fifth. Stretch of three to She's the winner. Then to the outside, Playa Zaragoza. Second last is Queen of Silence. And the early trailer is Ropa Vieja. They move into the far turn. And with the lead, it's Ballet Diva by a length and a half. It's high time is second. On the outside, Rosebud's Tiger third. Above fashion and Wish I Had Her next. These top flight have put five or six on She's the winner. Followed by Playa Zaragoza. Second last, Queen of Silence. And the trailer is Vieja Luna. They run to the top of the stretch with a quarter of a mile left to go. Ballet Diva has the lead under Carol Bio and he's sitting chilly. From the outside, it's high time. It's second above fashion on the outside. Wish I had it comes up the inside lane. Top of the lane, Ballet Diva shaking up for the drive and opens a three-length lead. Back to second is above fashion. Then it's high time. Wish I had a Late run down the outside from Vieja Luna, but in deep stretch, this is all Ballet Diva. Ballet Diva, ultra impressive and wrapped up with a five-length win. Second was above fashion in front of its high time, and Vieja Luna got running to be fourth in 104 flat. This is a horse I'm excited to see what she does. Uh, Jacks are better for him, Stanley Gold. They always seem to be able to develop some nice two-year-olds down in Florida throughout the summer, and uh, we'll see what uh, she can do. Perhaps we'll see her at Saratoga in one of the first two uh, two-year-old stakes there, Maggie. No doubt about it. She's impressive. She's very impressive. I mean, she won her debut by 12 and a quarter lengths under wraps. And once again, it was a complete blowout win here today. And I haven't seen, at least here, a filly of that kind of nature. And I'm hoping that they bring her up for the big money that we offer for the Schuylerville and the Spinaway because she looks like the real deal and, and a really out-and-out Florida-bred filly um, by Hear No Evil. And remember the dam, Dame Sylvie Guillaume. She was a turf horse for Bill Mott, Live Oak plantation no turf uh, no, no doesn't look like a much turf for a transfer to ballet diva though no she might About be able to run ago, on it though maybe she, could. maybe she can maybe yeah. she's she, she might i think they'll stick to the dirt for now probably. yeah i think that's a good plan <laughs> um but yeah ballet diva i i would love to see her racing up here in new york and uh it's just something to look forward to as always as we get to saratoga all the stakes races that we have on hand yeah especially the two-year-olds i mean you know i think uh, you know we, we focus so much on three-year-olds up to this point of the year and you know american pharaoh certainly delivered uh, a lot of excitement throughout the triple crown but you know you get into the middle of summer you get up to saratoga and it's, the game's not like it used to be where you've run a ton of maiden races here at Belmont. And you know who the prospects are going up there. The two-year-olds is still kind of to be determined when they go up there. But certainly, you know, a lot of fun up there uh, checking out the two-year-olds. Yeah, they're the future. It's always fun for me, you know, to see a lot of them going on to, you know, compete in the three-year-old uh, divisions. Going back through my notes and seeing what I thought um, of them as two-year-olds at Saratoga and how they progress. So it's just the best time of year for me. Yeah, it's the best time of year for, for most <laughs> racing fans. Saratoga will be up there in a couple of weeks. It was great uh, filling in for the boys this week. Uh, thank you very much, Mackie, and uh, they'll be back with next week's edition of National Racing Report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on the National Racing Report.